Hey guys, you've heard of the walk-in Wednesday. Well, this is gonna be a throwback Thursday. That's right, we're gonna take a look back at some guns that I've done before, but they actually came in this week. So, in way of review, this is not a gun, but check this out. Somewhere in about the middle of 2021, we decided to do a challenge coin. I don't know whose idea it was, but it's brilliant. Uh, here's the challenge coin some of you will remember. Uh, we put it on our website, we made it available to people. And uh, we did 2021, we featured the Walther PPK. So that's a look in the past, but here we are moving forward. 2022, we came out with a subsequent, <laughs> subsequent <laughs> uh, challenge coin, which is the Luger. Notice it's a Mauser Luger, which means it's from World War II, which is more, more my favorite. But don't they just look stunning, especially up against the the white gloves. So the 2022 model will be available on the website uh, now. Uh, and we're already looking forward to 2023. For 2023, YouTube likes it when we're an interactive channel. So I wanna hear from all of you. I'm kind of leaning toward 2023 being the year of the 1911 cult, but I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, what, what do you wanna see in 2023 on our challenge coin? And uh, we'll let you decide. Whatever the majority want, that's what we're gonna do. Now the next throwback is the Woolly Mammoth. Now you really have to go back in time. I got in a little bit of trouble. I said, the Woolly Mammoth was from like 30,000 to 3 million years ago. I don't know. All I know is it's prehistoric. Uh, so don't quibble with me on dates. Uh, they're prehistoric. But uh, I showed you this video. Uh, well, actually you'll remember the gold plated 1911 Nighthawk. Uh, so this is a modern pistol uh, made by Nighthawk. They're individually made, uh, superb craftsmanship. Uh, one of the comments other than I love the grip, one of the comments on this particular gun was the gold's a little gaudy for me, but, and then fill in the blank. People said, I wish it had a different finish. Um, so while I showed you the gold-plated Woolly Mammoth, and let me just clarify, it's a Woolly Mammoth molar. They actually find the skeletal remains in the Arctic region uh, in Siberia, and it is not illegal at once they're dead that they do gather the, the molars and the tusks. On the gold-plated, you can see the grip of the Woolly Mammoth, and if you don't like the gold, I just got another one. Again, this is a local guy who orders them. These are not for me. I generally don't buy any modern guns. Anything after 45 is too too late for me. But we do get these in and we, we handle the transfer for him. But um, I want to show it to you because it's going out the, the door tomorrow and thought you'd want to check out this woolly mammoth. Okay, so he actually ordered two of them. Uh, this one is 9 millimeter because you can see that it says 9 millimeter. But if you look at the bore size, uh, you can see this one is 45. And this is the style of a Colt Commando uh, size wise. Uh, the other one was a, a 1911, and this is a 1911 style. Again, these are all handcrafted, individually made, a precision-made firearm. Uh, let's focus on the grip here. So this is the molar that has been polished. And the finish on this one, instead of being gold, it's almost like an antique look. Uh, you can see how they just take the finish and they darken it a bit. Uh, it's just a classic look. It does have Trigicon uh, sights. There's the rear sight and the front sight, a uh, very qu uh, high quality sight. And um, if you rack the slide, it's just, uh, sorry I'm covering it up, but it, this is a very strong spring and the, uh, the hammer is extremely smooth. Uh, as smooth as any 1911 I've ever handled. This is like uh, Laura Croft in Tomb Raider. <laughs> You just push that button, it pops right out. You pop in your new. It just, it's just so simple. These are so, so well made. Uh, this spring, this spring is really tight, so a little hard to push. Uh, nine millimeter is not as tight. You can see the action on this is just smooth as silk, very tight. Great trigger action. Again, Trigicon uh, sights. Uh, now on this one, I thought this was used. It looks like it's been kept in somebody's garage. But in fact, this is the, uh, the look they wanted. This is brand new and they smudged it up. It looks like grease you can see in here and in here. Uh, they dirtied it up a bit. Again, nine millimeter. Uh, this one in particular, watch that. It pops right out. Uh, holds 17 rounds and again, nine millimeter.
So just uh, beautiful modern firearms. The only thing I will say about this, even though I'm doing the transfer, I do have a deal with the buyer that when the weather gets nicer, right now it's freezing cold outside, so I don't want to go shoot these at the range, at the outdoor range. Uh, come spring, uh, let's go to the range together and try these out, see how, see how they fire, uh, and you can join me. Okay, the next throwback is not 30,000 years ago, but just a couple weeks ago, I did weapons of the OSS. None of those guns belonged to me. I, they were loaned to me, but we actually uh, did just get one in. Uh, check this out. You can see here, it's Colt Commander, uh, Commando, excuse me, Colt Commando model. Comes in 38 caliber. It does have a Parkerized finish and it went to the Office of Strategic Services in the Fowler Building. You'll remember that. Uh, that's in the video. They sold a thousand of these. Uh, these, again, are the Colt Commando. This one, is, this one was used, uh, not in pristine condition, so perhaps was used in the war. Uh, a lot of these were also guarding facilities, and uh, especially the offices of the OSS, but some of them were used in combat and special operations. I have no way of knowing for sure, but you do see Colt Commando here, and you see uh, wear throughout. Open up the cylinder, the action is still very good. Uh, I already mentioned it is 38 caliber. There is no uh, military proof on this. You, uh, some of them you'll see a P either here or here. Uh, there's no military proof, so it was not approved for the military, but it was shipped to the OSS, special order, plastic grips with the Colt logo. Uh, and again, this is a Colt Commando that was issued to the OSS. If you haven't seen the, the video about the OSS weapons, check it out. Here's the link. Uh, it's bound to be one of our most popular ones. And again, it's only been out for about a week. Now, let's take a look at some revolvers. Uh, this is actually a revolver, but uh, the reason I want to look at this is because I had comments from a couple of people and they said, Tom, why do you only show us semi-automatic pistols? Why don't you ever talk about revolvers? Well, bingo, here's one, and I have a couple more to show you. Okay, so this is considered the Model 13 survival weapon of the U.S. Air Force. Uh, this was made back in the early 50s. We're going to take a closer look, but if you uh, remember, and again, this is a throwback from uh, probably a year ago. I did do a video, uh, you can see right here, and I showed this particular gun, uh, not in as good a condition as the one I have now. I also uh, mentioned that the Air Force, they were looking for a survival weapon. This is a time when the United States was, uh, well, they, they were fighting a, a Cold War with the communist countries, and we were having strategic uh, bombers go over with nuclear weapons, sometimes with, sometimes without. Uh, we were certainly spying on what we considered enemy countries. It was also the Ber uh, Berlin air uh, lift during that time where uh, East Germany was cut off and wouldn't allow us to take supplies, so we airlifted supplies in. Uh, they ordered these in about 1953, uh, and again, it was to be a survival weapon for U.S. Air Corps. Uh, survival weapon, I'm not sure if this is uh, after you land, you're supposed to survive by fighting off a platoon of enemy soldiers, or if the survival weapon was actually for you to use on yourself so you don't get ca captured. Uh, but it does come in 38 Special. Uh, it is very lightweight because it was made with aluminum. At the time I did the previous video, I got a lot of feedback from military people who said the reason they were concerned about the weight was because of the G-force. When you are ejected from a plane, they said the G-force is uh, tremendous, and so you can't have something heavy on your body, or it, beca it can become problematic if it hits you uh, because of the additional weight that is added from the G-force. Now, that's maybe too much technology, but they wanted this, suffice it to say, they wanted this gun to be as light as possible. So they made about 40,000 of these. Here's a picture of uh, a Colt. They did make a M13 Colt, uh, a lightweight Colt, and the uh, design did not work in that they found them to crack or break after uh, a limited usage. Uh, they all, Smith & Wesson uh, made this model, M13, uh, all aluminum other than the barrel and some of the parts. Um, they made these and they found them to fail regularly. And so since uh, the project was a failure, the Air Force went ahead and ordered 40,000 of them. I say that tongue in cheek because I have to laugh. They, they found that they uh, did not work properly, and yet they still ordered 40,000 of them. 
in, uh, that was 1953. By 1957, they banned them, said they're too dangerous, and they ordered that they be destroyed. That's why this particular gun is extremely rare to find. Uh, let's take a closer look. Now, in the previous video, and all the ones I've ever seen, they, they are worn. I don't know how people got them other than they got permission or took them home. They found out they were going to be destroyed. Oh, look at that. This one does have a P. Remember I said military when they, uh, uh, when they uh, military approved it, uh, they stamped a P. This is stamped with a P. Um, but this is the nicest one I've ever seen by far. Uh, these are aluminum, and so therefore it won't take bluing but rather it's anodized paint. Now, anodized paint is the same thing they used with aircraft, aluminum aircraft. They would use anodized paint, uh, and this uses anodized paint. Now, uh, this part is steel. I have this little bitty magnet. So the barrel is steel. Um, the cylinder, well, let's do steel. Uh, trigger, you see that uh, is case hardened, and this is case hardened, and this is also steel. Now, some of the internal structure is also steel, and that's why it, you get light magnification. Well, it falls right off, but the best way to tell that this is an aluminum frame is with the trigger guard. Oops, <laughs> that's stuck to the uh, trigger itself. There you go. Trigger guard is not magnetic, but the, the trigger itself is magnetic. Um, now, what made this one dangerous, because most of you say, I have, I've seen guns, modern guns, with aluminum frames. The aluminum frame was, did succeed in, in that they did continue to make them, but uh, what made this one dangerous was the aluminum cylinder. So the cylinder, it catches here, cylinder is non-magnetic. It just will fall off. So this is not magnetic. This is magnetic. This is magnetic, this is magnetic. So the cylinder is aluminum, the frame is aluminum, and what they found was it was too weak and that the cylinder would crack. So even though they banned them and ordered them destroyed, they were never to be used again. Oh, here's an important part, check this out. Property of the US Air Force. They, people like the design, this is really lightweight. We're gonna weigh it in a, in a minute here. Um, but if you take a look at this one, this is a Smith & Wesson smaller. You can see that this is actually about an inch shorter. Uh, this is all aluminum except the cylinder because of the failures of the past. The cylinder is magnetic. So the cylinder is steel, the frame is aluminum, and the barrel is, is steel. Uh, so this is a little bit smaller and they called this the airweight. Smith & Wesson has continued to make the aluminum frame and they are a very popular gun. They, uh, they, there are several, several different variations, but this is an example of a 38 Special airweight aluminum frame, which did become popular even after the failure of the M13 survival weapon. Now Colt did the exact same thing. Remember, I, I showed you in the last video a Colt M13 survival weapon that was issued to the Air Force. They were also ordered destroyed. They made far fewer of those. But just like Smith & Wesson, Colt liked uh, the design and the idea of the lightweight frame. So therefore, they made this Colt Cobra. The frame is aluminum. The barrel is steel. And the cylinder is steel. So. Uh, they made them with steel and an aluminum frame, and there's the Colt, and this is, of course, the Colt Cobra, along with the Smith & Wesson, a little bit smaller, and this is the air weight compared to the U.S. Air Force, lightweight, all aluminum, except for some of the small parts, including the very small barrel. Before we go and weigh some of these uh, guns, uh, this is also the original holster. Mint condition, the holster is in unissued condition. It does have a number here, which I think is a property number. Uh, there's the inside, it had some kind of an ink stamp. Uh, this is, even though it's in mint condition, and by the way, it, it, it does have a shoulder strap. Uh, shoulder strap, and this piece confuses me a little bit because it's supposed to attach here, but it's uh, so brand new and unissued, and this is not stretched, that it actually doesn't fit very well. I could make it fit, but it would damage it, which it already did. See how that button has already 
popped off of here. So that would need to be repaired in spite of the fact that this U.S. Air Force Mark holster is in pristine condition. Let's put the gun in it. Put that in the holster. Uh, I know some of you say don't do it. It causes holster marks. But I'm only doing it for the video and then I'll never do it again. Oh, here's um, one thing on the bottom that I wanted to get your feedback on. Uh, serial number makes sense. Uh, but this also has A5. And I don't know the meaning of A5. Uh, these uh, grips are very, uh, it's, it's, all, it's sharp. It's snagging, snagging my glove. So that's how sharp the uh, checkering is. But just a, a, a beautiful example of an M13 US Air Force survival gun. Hey, let's go check out the weights with my trusty scale. Okay, this is my scale. I actually use this to weigh party leader grips to show you the difference between real and fake. Let's start off with the uh, US Air Force gun. Again, a beautiful gun. Aluminum frame and aluminum cylinder is the big issue here. We can see that the weight is 14.7 ounces. So about 14 and a half ounces, very, very light. Uh, now with this one, I mentioned it's smaller. Actually, it's smaller in this length and in this length. So it's quite a bit smaller, but the uh, main difference is this is aluminum, but the uh, cylinder had to be steel uh, due to the stress. Let's put, put the uh, air weight up front and try this out, 14.1. So this is just a little bit lighter. And so you see the difference that, uh, it actually makes almost no difference, even though this is a little bit bigger. Um, the aluminum cylinder really didn't help that much, which is why they said, let's not do this anymore. Uh, so this is the lightweight. Uh, now here's the Colt Cobra with an aluminum frame. And let's see how much this, okay, this is about a pound. So it's a, a few ounces more. Uh, that's about a pound. And again, this is aluminum, the rest is steel, but you can also see that it is uh, quite a bit bigger, quite a bit bigger than the air weight. If you look at the hand grip, uh, the hand grip on the Cobra, and it's, that's a pretty interesting size. They're pretty much the same size. And again, um, it wasn't that they were copying each other. They, they made these guns to the specifications of the U.S. Air Force, but when it didn't work out, they made commercial models. I have one other gun here, which is a Smith & Wesson, brand new, just, uh, just got this in. Uh, this is a Smith & Wesson, a small gun, but it seems to be a good marketing ploy because they said the Lady Smith. Now, this is all steel, but it is particularly marketed to women because it's a small uh, 38 caliber. And let's check out the weight on this. So this is all steel, and this is the heaviest of all, uh, one pound, four ounces. So this is about a pound, one pound, four. And then the lightest weight is this one, the air weight, which was 14 ounces. So that gives you a good comparison of these lightweight pistols in 38 caliber. Hey, thanks for watching, and I hope you like this new feature that we called Throwback Thursday. And if you're a patron of our channel, which means you support our channel on a monthly basis, thank you very much. Also, the next thing we're going to do is a giveaway video just for the patrons uh, and give some stuff away. So stay tuned.